So, yes. Impossibility of home. Uh, brilliant drawing on the front. <laughs> Who did that, do you say? <laughs> well, it was me. <laughs> and there's the full version on the inside. Ooh. 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 So, I started... As some of you know, I wrote a novel a couple of years ago, and for ye the best part, the first three years of writing it, I didn't write any poetry. And then one September, 50 poems came out, just a, it's a mm. vomit of like, just thing. And then I stopped again, and then I started writing little bits of short prose. So I'd get this idea in my head <coughs> and spend like three, four days, sometimes a week, just writing different versions of this idea. So it's sort of all based around houses and homes and stuff, in, which is why it's called the impossibility of home. So I'm going to take my glasses off, and you're all going to gasp and go, oh, isn't he beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> he knew it without his glasses. Uh, so this is from the first part, which is called Improbable Longings. Can you all hear me? Yeah. 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 That's because I'm a gobshite. <laughs> so, <laughs> improbable Longings. Shoes huddled together by the side of the front door. The smallest on the outside, a piece of dried mud falling from them and waiting a little way beyond the two. The floor covering a pale manila absorbs what little light comes through the transom above the door. People sleep upstairs and unaware that the light cannot breathe in this quiet corridor. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you all got the effeminate <laughs> plan, plan, please. Uh, so I'm just going to just read them and introduce them there with some bits like sometimes when it rains when the pavements and roads are luminous with the reflected metal of the sky which is low and cloudy you can almost forget you are a body this earth our prison <laughs> it's a whole like dark gnostic sort of undertow to most of them uh, so i have these like mood swings where i'm I feel i'm absolutely trapped in hell and uh, then other times when I'm quite happy where I am. Uh, mostly because I'm married to the best woman in the world. Yeah. 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 I might write, I've got my toilet paper, I might write something about that. Yeah, <laughs> you've, had your, you've had your five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Houses rest in the quiet of the poor school rush, windows opaque and full of the mystery of the mundane. There's a greenhouse at the bottom of the, one of the gardens, paints broken and weeds growing in the pots left inside. Nature has taken back the well-worn path from the house, leaving only a dark green stripe no one in the house notices. The occupants, like the greenhouse itself, are engaged in the same slow descent into de decrepitude. Oh, <laughs> 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 if I'd have been drinking, so I would not have been able to get that last sentence out properly. Uh, yeah, in winter, when the sun is low, there is a light on the walls of a house, brittle and pale, no one is home and a Christmas tree stands in the window, tinsel seeming to shiver in the wind it cannot feel. Away from the window the house is troubled by shadows and the ghosts of the solstice make merry with the silence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> New town. The windows of the shop were covered with metal shutters, decades down and immovable. The doorway went in at an angle, the glass pane obscured by dirt and the length of grimy curtain. Dry leaves have blown in from somewhere, though there were no trees nearby. There's a new letterbox, the silver already tarnished. Everything about it is fading. How long till night comes and the shadows achieve dominance? Mm. <laughs> I'd like to see some sorry, upbeat, sort of happy things, but there isn't. <laughs> There's some conversational pieces with like two characters uh, but there's not really much joy in that either. <laughs> no one's here and our voices refuse to carry across the space between our houses. There's a light in the upper window, an orange glow full of warmth and promise, yet no one answers when we call. The sky was white when we first came but here we are in full night. Ice has come down and the silence is unearthly, absolute. How long should we carry on calling before we turn back? <laughs> they walk to the shopping arcade in the soft summer twilight, the warm wind blowing in their faces. 
There was a magical Christmassy feel to the evening, the darkest blue. The light from the shop glowed with an intensity that was deep rather than bright. Inside they felt so tall, so godlike, and just speaking was a joy. Rapture pulsed in them, made them bright, and then it did not. They became ordinary again. <laughs> Dead again. Which is probably the che cheeriest chapter heading out of all of them. There's a sound, a tone really, that exists at night. Maybe it's the sound of the earth singing in space and we can only hear it at night. That the cacophony we call society is our way of competing with the song, of drowning it out. You should listen to it at least once in your life, hear the earth sing. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey not hopeful, I'll have to get rid of that. <laughs> In sleep he becomes someone else, a dead man wearing the face of an angel he'd seen in a book. Troubled when he woke, he would continue to wear the ghost of the face as he engaged with his excuse for a life. But no one knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Improbable Lodgings 2, the sequel. <laughs> Those tiny shadows, the ones that fall and gather, that seem to float around the taps and the cups by the sink. That's how I feel some days. There is, as far as I know, no single word or lofty philosophical term to describe that feeling. So I stand by the sink, my hands still wet from washing up, and ponder my link with these shadows. Yes. <laughs> The journey of attrition. I am a ghost. I walk the streets of this small town and know I am a ghost. Few see me and even fewer know that they are not real, are not dead. When I move, I move through a strata of memory that clings to me, that speaks to me as if I were a book and I was reading of past events. You aren't alive, but I am a ghost. Mm. Yes. <laughs> No, we're all dead, really, and we sort of... See, that, that, that I was reading a book by Peter Ackroyd, not Peter Ackroyd, uh, yeah, it was Peter Ackroyd, I don't know if you've read any books by Peter Ackroyd, but in this book he was talking about history, it just totally blew my mind, because he said history's not the past of where in the present, he said history's a continuous thing, we're using words and phrases and gestures, which are centuries old, and we're walking down paths, which are centuries old, Linthorpe Road, as a, a, a road, is like well over a thousand year old. Mm. But mm. modern Middlesbrough only started in the 1830s. But if you're walking up that road, you're walking up a road that people have walked up for thousands of years. So there's this whole layers of history that you don't think about, that you don't recognise, that we're all part of. And at one point, we'll all be dead. And there'll be other people walking it. And some people will probably remember seeing us, and it'll be a recurrence. And all this. Uh, yeah, I'll shut up. <laughs> Old town. In this town there are no lonely crossroads to meet the devil at. Nothing as obvious as that would suit this place. No, here we meet the devil all the time. Heaven is a myth we cannot afford. Nor would we want to trust it. Hell is everywhere. It could be as commonplace. Our houses stand firm against the night. Doors open inwards are strong defences. Day follows night, and the sun soaks up the shadows of the deathless ones. There are many trees. Yes. <laughs> Improbable Lodgings 3. Another one. <laughs> she wants to leave home, but wherever she goes, home follows her. He is the same. They find each other in a cafe, a room in which they can talk. Home is dark, and the shadows have sharp edges. Together, together they form a united front against the wickedness of home and families. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what all the boards do. Have we got enough time? I don't know. No. No. <laughs> you can get more. My night, and I will torture you with that. <laughs> This 
this is my uh, proof copy so of my if, if you would like an unmarked copy there are me at eight pounds <laughs> 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 White, his skin untouched, dead skin like lard, the morning quiet, where are they that would sing of such things? Lost, nowhere, well, how can such a thing be if they are not here to sing them? Yes. <laughs> Marcus Agonistes, this has got lots of like talking between two people, but this hasn't got any talking in. Apart from me, I'll be talking. <laughs> There's a light that passes through his body, different from the light of the sun. Sometimes it will simply flash through him and the world will become brighter in those moments, more real, and then it will blind him. It will coat the inside of his skull and burn through his eyes. There is no joy like it, nor pain. If the ecstasy lingers, burning for hours, then he will feel as if he is in agony, intense, so intense. These worlds are not meant to, to mix. The joy is too much, he cannot shut it off. I am burning, he says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like proper disturbed in that, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna read just a couple more then we'll uh, have a short break. When we have the short break though, you see all these lovely paintings and stuff like that. Well, Diane, the artist, is there. So if you want to ask her any question, or maybe buy a painting, I don't know. We've got some prints, I think. She will be there to answer all of your questions. Uh, obviously, you're going to come down here and buy some of this. Um, imperfect reflections. What light remains here on this earth is hidden. It has been tied into our guts, our eyes, the heart that beats our time in this lie of hell. I find traces of a breath everywhere, I turn, but the light is fleeting. We were not meant to last, these bodies as fragile as they are strong. Divide and scatter, that's how we've survived. Time, the echoing years, oblivion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't read them all. I'm not going to read them all, it's millions of them. Oh, yeah. They're all short yeah. and prosy. That's okay. why I called it a short prose book. <laughs> so this is I'm the final couple of bits. This is from the final bit called Empty Gestures 2. It's like the first one, but it's different. <laughs> we leave the house by day and pretend we belong, that we're normal. The act begins in the short passageway before the door. In the dim light of the transom, we watch our hands flex, making fists that will hurt no one. Where we live, the roads are lined with trees, and in the summer we walk in their shade. But now in winter, the shadows are as thin as the pretense that we are human. The wind is icy and our skin itches, our feet sure on the dead grey pavements. Here a bird sings in the company of its kind. There people walk, talking of their lives. There is no in-between for us. Mm. Oh, mm. <laughs> this is the final one. So it ends on a, a beautifully up-tempo sort of <laughs> joyous... Yeah. You may cry. <laughs> it's that uplifting and beautiful. It's like something from like Beethoven or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, this is the last one. There is no way to mediate this silence. We speak to it, take it into our hearts, but it remains the same. In the respect we have, we, in this respect, we are all saints, but nothing now is holy. The days pass like years, our hands held uselessly in front of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you want to buy something, feel free. Uh, if you want to talk to Diane about the artwork.